Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to create animals for Zoo Tycoon 1 using Blender. And because Zoo Tycoon 1 is a, um, a two-dimensional game and Blender is a 3D software, you might be wondering how this is accomplished. And quite simply, we take a, a 3D model and render it out to 2D, so two-dimensional sprites. And because um, this makes work a lot easier. I've created a script for this purpose and the first uh, thing that you want to do is install this script. Um, you can find it in my signature or any other place where I've published it. Um, you'll get the link. So this is the file. You download this and then you can open Blender and install this file using Blender's um, add-on installer. So you go File, User Preferences, um, make sure you're on Add-ons, and you go Install from File, and then you navigate uh, to the place where you've saved it. In my case, it's in Google Drive. Mm. There it is. So select that and install from file and then you have to scroll down maybe and you have to make sure that this checkbox here is checked and then you can go and save user settings okay you can close this window so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a musk ox um and because i i don't have that in in Zoo Tycoon 1, but I'm, I have that in Zoo Tycoon 2, so I can use my Zoo Tycoon 2 model and animations to create a um, all the animations I need for Zoo Tycoon 1, because I can easily create all these uh, sprites in, in a batch process using this script that I've just installed. And this script, if you go to the render tab, I'll make it a bit wider, and scroll um, all the way down. There's a new panel here for ZT1 uh, re sprite rendering and it has several different options and we'll get to those all later. So first thing we need to do is we need to determine our um, Zootacoon 1 base animal. So for this we open up Ape, the original animal project editor create a new project. Um, we're going to be using the American Bison as a base. So now we have access to all its animations and can preview them um, so that we can um, determine which animation from uh, Zoo Tycoon 2 corresponds best to the um, animation we see here in Ape. So we start off uh, with eat. Okay, now it's time to um, load um, the Zoo Tycoon 2 model and animation. Or first the model and then we can load all the animations to preview them and name them accordingly. So the musk ox, um, I've extracted this from its uh, Z2F file. Um, you should probably know how to get there. Just open it with a zip and navigate uh, through the folders until you find it. Um, it's using BFB models. Uh, so if you want to import um, animations uh, from Zootacoon 2, you need either the NIF scripts or my BFB scripts. Um, but it doesn't hurt if you have both. Um, so now we can go back to Blender. Go and file import um, BFB. Go to the musk ox folder and import the BFB model, and there it is. You can go into texture view so we see it clearly. And now, because we don't want to export that back to a uh, Zoo Tycoon 2 we can delete all the stuff that we don't like. So on this layer here there's a low um, resolution. We don't need that. On this layer here there's this capsule collider. We also don't need this. 
now we're good to go. Okay, so first we begin with the eat animation. So we um, have to, oh yeah, we have to first load all the animations. Um, I've just extracted the complete, um, all original Zootacoon 2 um, Z2F files here into one folder. So I have access to everything I need and I can simply import it into Blender. So if I go um, through these here, entities, units, animals, and I have all the animals and I have all the updates that I need. Um, so if I do this, I make sure that I have, um, in case something is overwri overwritten at some point, I make sure I have the latest version um, with all the fixes and stuff. Um, so the mask ox uses animations from the from the R rocks, um, which is called cow R rock, for some reason. And now we can import animations from this. So I'm gonna navigate to okay, file import bf file. I'm going to navigate to this cow R rock folder which is here. Now I see all its animations and I want to import eat idle. Just double click it and there it is. Well, now we see there's some distortion here. Um, the drawer is messed up. This is because it uses a different rotation type and it's not really completely supported. So we're going to do something about that later. Now we're going to do something about that right away. We're going to rename this. Yeah, we have to fix something else first. We should probably, for the sake of better animations, um, retrieve the original skeleton because as you can see this this is hovering around a little so I delete the, this skeleton here and I'll import the original unedited Aurox uh, skeleton just the BFB file and now there's all this stuff I don't want the Aurox model I delete it all and all these empties. So many empties. Okay, now I can um, attach this to that skeleton. Make sure the um, skin modifier points to the scene root and the model is child of the scene root. Okay. Yeah, that looks a lot better. And now I'm just going to disable. I'm going to rename this uh, draw node to disable it being imported by the scripts. So now if I do that, nothing will happen uh, once I import it. Okay, so we get um, get a better idea of what's happening with um, with all these animations. We need to open the um, action editor, and so just drag this little corner here to the right, and go to the dope sheet editor. And this is where the action editor is hidden for some weird reason. And here it is. Now, don't need this. Um, now we can. Yeah, we have to uh, remove this old action, so just uh, click the F button for it and we'll remove it later because it's a bit complex to do so. Um, yeah. So we can distinguish more easily from those animations that we actually need because all the animations that we're going to be creating are going to be lowercase files. 
So eat idle, import it again. And that looks better already. No more distortion here. It is a little bit too much, but that's not too bad. We can edit this. Mm. Neck one. Okay, so we're going to clear going to remove uh, the rotation of neck one for this animation because it, it sticks into the ground too much now yeah, yeah it, it does we can't leave it that way so we'll, we'll leave it like this and then add a new keyframe location and rotation and see it's added here and of course because this is an eating action we should also add a um, jaw movement back in but I, I doubt you'd ever see that in game but just to be sure we also keyframe jaw a bit and add a few keyframes just here and there and then of course also open it I'm just duplicating them some of them so we get slightly interesting patterns so things are happening and you know it's not so boring and, and the speed should be about right Yeah, you know the whole thing appears a bit slow, so I'll just make it a little bit faster. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, so now we have this eat action, and let's go back to Ape and check how it, exactly it's called, and it's simply called eat, so we're going to call it exactly the same, in lowercase letters, eat. Okay, this one is done, off to the next one. We're going to look at Ape again and see this next one is Head Ground, Head Grund, um, which is uh, shortened to eight characters because that's only how long um, Zoo Tycoon any one animations can be, only eight characters long. Um, the scripts take care of that, um, I mean, they shorten them to eight characters, but you should name the, the actions properly in the first place. So we'll import um, this action again and it's stand um, to eat. Uh, there we go. And now of course we have to fix this uh, transition pose um, to the um, transition po or to the pose that we've determined in the in the eat action. First um, we rename it to head grind ground okay there it is fine now eat um this is our transition pose so we select all bones and copy their pose and go to the other action go to the end and then paste it and now enter the keyframes okay and now all the keyframes are there, but we have this sudden jerk here, which is because this is completely sampled here, this um, neck bone. We, we're going to do, we're just going to keep the first and last sample, so all the rest is nicely interpolated. Now that looks nice. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, if we play it back, that looks about right. I like that. Okay, now we can continue with uh, the next animation. And this is going to be jerk. 
Okay, so it's shaking its head, but I think we have a shake head animation further down. It appears to be nearly the same. Well, we're gonna see what we're gonna do here. Jerk. Um, file import BF. We're gonna be using, I'd say we're gonna pick a RAM other. And see how that looks like. Yeah, I guess it works. So we just call it jerk and continue. Next animation is lie down, which is which corresponds to stand to lie in Zoo Tycoon 2. So you see sometimes we have a pretty much a direct fit, at other times we don't. But we somehow have to make it work. Yep. Now it, it goes below the ground, but I think that won't be a problem later on once we have the shadow and everything. We can um, safely ignore that for now. Lie down and we have lie idle, which is exactly the same as it says lie idle. Rename it lie idle. Lie back, yeah, looks about right. Lie side, okay, we don't have a lie side animation. What we do have is um, lie to sleep. We're going to be using that and call it lie side because we don't want to, or we, we would uh, like to avoid um, having to edit the, the behavior files because that's big work. Yeah. We might want to edit this pose later on. Okay, look left. Next one. Look, um, stand, look left. Okay, and if you look closely here, in Ape you see that this animation only goes um, halfway through. So at once it reaches the end point here, um, Zoo Tycoon 1 plays it back in reverse. Um, so it saves a few frames and um, we'll just uh, mimic this behavior but for this we have to edit the animation a little. So we go to top view so we see clearly what's happening and then here oh, this has many frames. At some point here I think it's reached um, like the maximum. So we select all bones and insert a keyframe here with um, the I key and then we go over scroll out a bit and select all keyframes after that if we select this top row here it automatically selects everything and delete them and now it'll stop right there it'll still play back something because it extrapolates the keyframes here afterwards uh, but it doesn't matter because it only renders as long as it has keyframes. Okay, and this is called look left. And then we're going to do the exact same procedure for look right. Look right, insert a keyframe here, deselect all, and yeah, right spot, and delete all those keyframes. Good, next animation. So we got look left, look right. Now there's rub. Okay, we're gonna be using, I think we've got that. Yeah, we're gonna be using rub object. Oh yeah, that's pretty much exactly the same rub. Next is probably run. Yep. File import. This should be straight ahead. Or straight forward. <laughs> it's run ahead and straight forward. Yeah, here's run ahead. Where is it? Should stay 
in place, but we'll deal with that later. So this is run. Then we have scuff. I'm not exactly sure. It's probably scratching the ground or something. Don't think we have an exact correspondence for that. We could be using grunt, maybe, or bash fans. We're going to be using grunt. Well, it does something. So this will be scuff. And we have shake. We had a shake action. Shake head. So this is shake. Yeah, it's a bit messy. I guess that'll do the trick. Then we have side idle, which we said we would be using um, sleep for. So this is going to be sleep idle. But we call it side idle to preserve the behavior. Okay, now stamp. Ooh, what are we going to do here? Stamp will be... Hmm. Sometimes it's it's difficult to pick. You could of course, um, you know, import every single one and check which looks best. But I think I'll try Bash Fence. Oh yeah, that's nice. Yeah, better than nothing at least. Okay, stamp. Then we have stand. Then that's straightforward. Stand idle. There we go. Stand. We have trot. We don't have trot. At least we have nothing called trot. But we have, of course, we have walk. But we're gonna need that later. But we have charge ahead. And this is probably even a, a trotting cycle. Can't see it because it moves too fast. But we'll see. Anyway, call it trot. And then. We have, oh yeah, just walk left. And this is, of course, also straightforward. Very simply walk ahead. Walk. Okay, so now we have all the animations that we need. And now we need to process them a bit um, to make them suitable for Zoo Tycoon 1, for sprite rendering. Okay, so as you see, this is moving forward and we don't want it because if you look at ape, um, the animation is not moving forward. It, it's like it's on a tre on a treadmill. It's uh, in place. And I, now we have a look at um, at this tool panel I made. And there's one one tool that will help us in this case here. And this is these mute um, bip zero one uh, movement uh, buttons. And these can. What they're doing is they're simply muting the channels, but only in one axis. So um, if there's something moving up or down, we don't want to block that. We just want to block the forward movement and only of BIP01, because this is what moves the animal forward. In most cases, it'll be BIP01 Y movement. So I'm going to... Oh, it's there. There's an error. Thought the script was working properly. I'm going to have to debug that. Okay. Um. Yeah, where do we go? Add-ons. Yeah, key one. Yeah, this one should be intended by one block. No, come on. Well, well, well. Okay. 
and now I can continue but I have to save and reload um, the file just to make it recognize the updated script and it's never a bad idea to save a file okay close blender And now we can try again. Okay, no error. And now look, it stays in place. Okay, great. It does what it's supposed to be doing. Cool. So now we can also have a closer look at the drop cycle. Oh, well, you know, as soon as it reaches the end, it, it goes all wonky. But again, as I said, that doesn't matter because it only renders those keyed frames here. Yeah, that's, you could consider that a trot, I think. I'm no expert on gates, though. So what else do we have to change? This all looks fine. I think we're gonna, yeah, delete it. Now if we close it again, Save and close. This should delete our um, this animation that we wanted to delete. If we open the file again, save again. Now it should be gone. Yeah, and it's gone. This is some kind of blender weirdness that you can't delete anything directly. You can only um, not store it, and it'll be gone when you open the file the next time. But you can't delete it instantly. You could with a script, but that's a bit dangerous because it tends to break things, so I don't do that. Okay, now we've got all these animations. Eat looks fine. I'm just checking each. Head ground looks fine. To see if there's anything uh, wonky with any of them. Lie down looks about right. Lie idle. Should also be fine. Now, last side, we should probably edit the neck here on neck one. What happens when I delete this channel? Yeah, it's not a good idea if I just delete it. I'll do the same as I did for the um, eating animations. I'm just keyframe the first and last frame. Yeah, a lot better. Um, and I key this last pose here and go to side idle and paste it. Now that should be fine. Oh, I forgot to set the keyframe, of course. Yeah. Okay. Um, so back to lie, look left. Look left should stop. Yeah, it does. This as well both the same length no this one is one longer yeah just to make sure that these are equivalent oops i'm going to delete this last keyframe here as well wrap looks fine you don't even have to play them back completely normally you see if something's wronky from the first few frames if you... Oh, what's happening there? Something moved it forward and then moved it backward again. Okay, this is it. Actually, it's not that clever if I if I delete the keyframes. Um, 
because it's doing something. So this is something you have to watch out mm, when the animations suddenly decide that they want to They want to shift place because for Zutekun one it doesn't matter because um, it'll work either way. It'll just place uh, the root bone at a, at another point. So I'm basically doing all those th um, all those uh, things that the scripts did automatically. I'm doing it for all animations now to make sure it's not um, moving forward or backward. I'm just going into each pip01 channel and deleting, or not deleting, I'm muting um, the Y curve, Y movement. And when I've done that, it should no longer be um, hovering around when I change animations. This is, of course, uh, crucial because it would give um, it would look <laughs> quite uh, strangely in Blender. This one is already locked or muted, uh, not in Blender in, in Zutekun 1. Yeah, I'm, this workflow is not really optimized, but at least it works. Mm. So actually, I, the reason um, these um, these muting scripts um, don't mute it uh, for every channel is they see if um, if during the animation the animal has moved forward or somewhere at least, or if it has stayed in place. And if it has stayed in place, it will um, it will not mute the channel because it could have been moving. Um, during the animation, but because it only checks the end result to see if um, if it moved forward altogether. Um, because in some animations you need um, to have a BIP01 animated to prevent uh, the animal hovering around. If you muted it, you'd get hovering. Okay, so now that looks good. I'm going to save it again. And I think we're ready uh, to try and render something. Now, we'll first we'll do it with just one animation to test because it'll, it'll take a long time, or well, a few minutes. So first we have to display on the system console here because this gives us um, information about what's happening and all those things. Okay, so important we have to specify the output directory and so it works probably this has to be temp with an e not like the blender temp file uh, folder then output and then it's of course animals then the code name of the muskox so muskox it's um, shorter than eight characters, so we can use that. And then this is uh, going to be the adult and the default um, name for adult animals in Zutekun 1 is mm. male. Female animals are only um, animated if they're different, so the, it defaults to male. Okay, now this is our path and our, our root path for this one. And now if we click this uh, render sprites for current animation, it'll do just that. So let's take a while. We can look at the console and see there's something happening here. And you can see it, it created all those sprites. Now we're going to look at them to see how they looked. And you, you can see it has also adjusted on the uh, 3D view a bit. So things have changed. Here we don't need this muskox, we don't need this cow our rocks, um, we don't need this, we don't need this. Now we, here this is the output folder, 
and in the output folder we have the muskox folder and then we have the mail subfolder there's a run subfolder and then we have all those beautiful sprites with a nasty green background okay now i think this is um this is probably a bit too dark to see so i'm gonna try and crank up the material power um yeah it's already all the way up right then i'm gonna crank up the brightness in the texture so i'm just gonna edit it in gimp or gimp you're supposed to be saying gimp even though it sounds silly uh brightness color contrast so oops want to make it a bit lighter and I also increase um, the saturation so it doesn't look as pale and now it looks a bit bluish Oops, color balance is can be quite difficult. And I'm going to do it with uh, hue. Yeah, maybe that could work. So go back to Blender and reload it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think that's a lot better. Okay, now we're gonna save it again. Yeah, now before we can properly render out all those sprites, we need to do um, a few more things. So the first uh, thing is is um, running at a um, too big a frame rate. So um, this is uh, sampled at uh, 24 frames per second, and if we if we if we uh, render our sprites at this sample rate, we simply get too much data, um, and it'll it'll make uh, Zoo Tycoon um, extremely slow. So um, we have to remap uh, those uh, samples from 24 to let's say. We'll use uh, 12, and for this, uh, we'll use this time remapping feature. So, in the old value, we enter 24, and in the new value, we enter 12. And then, to apply this um, to to the actions, so this this one will be only half as long than uh, 15 frames at half half the current sample rate we go to remap action time and this will go over all actions and um, apply this change in frame rate let's try it Ooh, and look at that it's only 15 frames long now and the global frame rate is now 12 frames per second this was reset here to the original value and now if we play it back You see that looks a little bit edgy, but when you zoom out, it becomes less obvious. And it's certainly better for the game. So uh, many things in game use uh, 12 frames per second, some use eight. Um, I think that's, but I think 12 is a good average. Sometimes when you have fast moving things, you might want to go up to 16 or 18 frames per second it really depends okay so now that this is settled um we can try oh yeah we've got to do one more thing we've got to uh, scale correctly now this is almost in scale uh, so musk oxen are um, 2.5 meters 
long. I, I suppose this works. It's almost 2.5 meters, a little bit too big. But in any case, if you would want to scale it, if you would have to scale it, you just take this root empty and change its scale. Um, and th these grid, um, this grid here that you see is just each grid uh, square corresponds to one square meter. So you can easily line it up there, and it'll be um, it'll correspond to that in game. Okay, but we don't have to scale because it's already in scale by chance. Um, so we're gonna just try and render out one animation again. I had to close my Blender, um, so I have to display the console again. And now we're gonna try and render sprites again. Um, yeah. Where do we go? C, temp, output animals. There's so much trash here that we don't need. Mask ox, male, walk. And here we have our frames. We can look at one in detail and see if everything's all right. Yeah, it looks cool. Okay. Now I want you to look at something else at, at the lying uh, lie idle. Ah, yeah. I've, I've updated the scripts a bit so that it doesn't go under the ground too much. I want to see how that looks like. Yeah. Uh, so it uses the same technique that I've used um, for for underwater animations. It uses a boolean modifier to um, to cut away anything that is uh, underneath a certain height. And um, that works quite well and the cool thing is it, it works um, dynamically. So if I play this lie down animation it cuts it off um, when it needs to. So that's pretty fancy. Okay I think we're ready to render out um, yeah, the complete uh, set of animations. So we'll do that now. And you can see in the console that it's working and it's taking some time. And while it does that, you can't uh, do anything in Blender. But in the meantime, I can um, explain you a few things. So what we're doing here is we're creating um, those PNG images. And these are um, in true color. So you have... Um, you have 265 uh, different values for each of the four channels for red, green, blue and transparency and this adds up to a whole um, to a huge amount of different possible colors and because uh, Zootek 1 has to display these um, animations quickly and load them quickly they have to be um, converted down to a, a um, a less heavy format. So uh, Zootacon 1 uses like most um, compressed images types uh, things. It's like GIF um, uses just 265 colors altogether. So not, not per, ch per channel but uh, 265 colors altogether. And now we have to take these uh, full color images that Blender gives us and transfer those to um, uh, 265 colors. And this is actually not so easy because we need to create a palette. And for this, I've uh, created a new script which um, uses um, the FFMPEG program to go over each uh, frame and um, create a palette for all together which tells it um, which colors, uh, which 265 colors it should use. But first, before we do that, we just uh, check the output. 
and I would say it looks good. Yeah, no need to check anymore. Okay, um, so now we can um, have it do this first step. So it, it should now create the palette and then um, process each animation. Hmm. Why is it crashing now? You know, sometimes strange things happen. This is very early in its development, so things are bound to go wrong. You're yeah, bound to get errors. Um, but when we look at these files here, you can see what it has done. So it has, um, in the first step, it has created this m.png file, which is palette, which has been used for everything. And then this palette has been converted to a palette file for Zoo Tycoon 1, which uh, Zoo Tycoon 1 can actually read. So we can in the end uh, delete this m.png file and only keep the m.pal uh, file. Now what should be happening, I think this error was not fatal yet. Um, it seems to have worked. Um, so it took, um, took it 70 seconds to go from these uh, palletized images, uh, which use only 265 colors from these individual frames two compressed uh, Zoo Tycoon 1 animations. I'm using um, ZT Studio by, um, by Jeff. Um, he, um, yeah, he made it available and I've changed the code around a bit to work with my stuff and we're working on it together now. Um, um, and it, trying to make it a bit more stable and, and work well and interact uh, with with those scripts so and as a result of of this conversion process we get these nameless files here we get e we get ne we get se and we get uh, s somewhere yeah here now what we need to do is now we can get rid of all those png files and to do this, we simply go to the um, M folder, and go to the search bar and type .png. And it'll list them all. Um, you can see if, when it's done checking if there are no more numbers growing here. Simply select them all and delete them. Yeah, this takes a while, especially if the images are large and if you have plenty. This can really take uh, several minutes, actually. If you have like uh, thousands of frames, but this one is reasonably fast. Mm. So now we can uh, put these into into a, a, a um, ZTD file and, um, and we can put it in game. So I've just cleaned the search here. And now what we have left is this one palette file. And then we have all these uh, folders. Each of them represents one of the animations. And if we go into them, we have only these nameless files here. Each of them represents one view of um, each animation. And then we have this, um, this animation file, which basically just links all these files together and makes them accessible for um for Zoo Tycoon. So we don't have to do anything about these um animation files. These are auto generated and should be fine as they are. Okay. Mm. So now obviously you'd want um a um a young animation as well. Now let's just quickly put that together so you see um that the process is quite simply the same 
Um, so to create that, we'll import um, the young model, obviously. Um, yeah, sometimes this gets stuck. I'm not sure if, if it's something uh, with my graphics processor or whatever. But uh, in that case, I just resave and have to close Blender and open it again. And now it'll be fine. I hope. Yeah, it is fine. Okay, so now now we've got this uh, young model here and we've got to make it fit the rest. So first get rid of the, all those lots again. Oops. Don't need that. Don't need this collider. We don't need this model anymore, but we'll just put it on another layer in case we need it at some later point. We don't need the armature of... How many lots are there? I think there's something significantly wrong with this uh, model. Mm -hmm. We don't need um, the skeleton that we've just imported. We'll use the one um, that we've been working with for all this time. And now we can um, attach it again to the skeleton scene root here. And also set the skin modifier. And there's something wrong. Uh, there's nothing wrong, it's it's just a little bit shorter. So we have to edit this skeleton. We don't have to bury much. We can simply edit the bones and pull them uh, so that they fit. Yep, that's good. And now I'll just center it here. I think it'll remain. No, it won't remain. No, it should remain because it has no no location keyframe. Well, maybe now it'll remain in place. Mm. Now just one more thing. We have to... Uh, one. Now we can. I think there, are, yeah, there are a few more things we don't need, which might mess up the script. So better clean them up. Okay, now we we take the root. Note again, this empty here. Unscale it. Yeah, let's say by 0.5. Now we use 0.55. Okay, so now this is significantly smaller than it was before, just uh, 80 centimeters tall. Okay. Now, I think that's all we need for this one. Now we just have to change the path here from male to young. So just use a Y. Um, and everything else should be good. I display the console again. Um, and render all enemies. So this takes a little while again. In the meantime, we can prepare the coding. Um, so I'm going to use for this task. Uh, for this task, I'm, I've been told um, uh, that. This new APE XP um, 3.2 supposedly does a good job because um, all the previous AP or APE versions uh, would introduce errors. So I'll just trust him and um, 
try this one. It's the first time I've ever tried it, really. Or oh. in recent time at least. So we take the bison again. Yeah. And now we just uh, save it because we can do all these edits later. Um, what I did for my for my other uh, recent uh, creations is I simply went to the uh, ZTD files um, and uh, gathered everything uh, uh, via 7-zip and uh, collected it, put it all together, renamed it and zipped it again, uh, simply as that. Okay, so this is going to be muskox.ctd. Yeah. Right. We can go back to the normal ape for now. And just to display stuff because it's faster. Is it still rendering? No, it's done. Uh, so we can convert all sprites again. And it's working. I'll have to check back what that's supposed to be because that's the first time I ever got this error but it doesn't seem to be fatal it just seems to be a random hiccup who knows okay um, so delete the PNG files from here as well meanwhile I'm gonna change I've opened this uh, ZTD file What I'm going to do is I'm going to rename um, this UCA file, uh, which is uh, the configuration of the animal. I'm going to rename it from this uh, randomly generated code to muskox. Same for this folder, which is exactly the same as our um, musk folder that we have um, here and there you see we've got this M folder and this Y folder and we've also got an M folder and a Y folder here okay so we can delete these two and add these two we can also delete these um, bison palette and um, these two wave files because we don't need them um, we don't need the palette because we have our own palettes and we don't need the wave files because we can link to the original ones we could also add our own but if we don't want to do that uh, we can just use uh, the original ones the original ZTD file yep um, so now let's just uh, change this around a bit so we open the uh, configuration file and just do a bit of a re name and replace so we take uh, this code name that we have here um, and rename it to muskox yeah that'll do uh, we'd also have to rename uh, these icons at some point I think they'll be crashing now or not crashing but they'll, they'll look ugly but it really doesn't matter so much because we can simply reload them we should do anyway but it's not really about the icons for now anyway I just want to get those animations in game so let's load it and see if everything's working yeah as I told you I think it it messed up the palette files I can't find them oh no what's happened here it looks like we had several shades of green in there which is obviously not nice uh, so we're getting hmm so we're, we're not getting the green cut out as a green screen as it's supposed to be but instead that damn thing cut out yeah 
and cut out the black instead. No oh dear. Yeah, what do we do to fix that? Mm. Actually, I don't know. Sometimes it it it's not really predictable what happens when it generates those palette files. Uh, so be prepared for some random weirdness. Um, I'm gonna open up uh, ZT Studio now. So um, this is it. We're gonna open a, a CT graphic, just the first one. Yeah, you see, this should have been the first color. I'm wondering what happens when we save this now. And when we reload it, might. It's worse. Hmm. Oh, come on. Hmm. So well, I have to do is um, yeah, I think I know. All right, that's it. I'm gonna stop it again. So I found out the solution to the problem, um, and it appears that the palette had been um, ordered in a, in a way that was not expected, and for this reason I've had to change things around a little bit now you see here is a new button um, which basically means I've split what happened before on one click into two operations um, so that you can make um, any changes that you have to the color palette if you have to so I've uh, just re-rendered all the um, animations for the male I've deleted the animations for the young. Um, so now I'm going to generate a new color palette from the current animation, which is um, walk ahead. So it'll take those frames um, in east view and generate a color palette for them. Let's see if it worked. Yes, that seems good. And now we go to mail and we should see a color palette here, which is basically just a 16 by 16 pixel uh, PNG file. You can open that in GIMP. Scroll in. Now you see this green pixel, which is our background color, um, is for some reason not the first pixel as it would be expected. So what we're going to do is we simply swap this pixel uh, with the first pixel to make sure that um, ZT Studio uh, correctly recognizes it as the uh, transparent color. Oops. Now come on. Let me try again. No. Yeah. So now these are um, resorted, and the um, the background color is really the first pixel. So we can simply overwrite this file. And then continue with um, the second step 
for the for the previous animals that I've done, I I didn't have to do this because for some reason it got um, the background color in the um, in the first spot of the palette. I have no clue why it didn't work this time. It appears to be a bit random. So now we can uh, do the second step and index all frames using this palette and then convert them to um, Zuteco and One graphics using uh, CT Studio. Yeah, we get this error again, but it doesn't matter. I haven't looked into that yet, but it's not uh, causing any harm. Yeah, it will take a few seconds uh, to convert all these um, indexed images into into Zootacoon 1 graphics. We can open uh, ZT Studio in the meantime, so we can preview things uh, when it's done. It should take just a few more seconds. Otherwise, something might have gone wrong. Come on. <laughs> yeah, finally. Great. Um, so now we're going to open these, or one of these, and just check if it's really transparent. Yeah. It looks the way it's supposed to be. You can see here. Green is the first color in the palette, and it's hidden. And this is great, we can play back the animation. The speed is also working. Awesome. Okay, so now we'll uh, just repeat the very same procedure for the young model. Uh, we have to go back, and now we can move this adult model to the one layer and bring back the young to the um, first layer. Rename the path to young. Um, render sprites for all animations. It's rendering, okay. Um, meanwhile, we can remove all PNG animations from the mail folder, uh, all PNG images, because we, we're not gonna need them anymore as we already have our CT1 graphics and if we kept them now we it would um, ZT Studio would um, recalculate um, the, um, the ZT1 graphics and would, it would just take uh, longer than it had to because you know we've already calculated them and they're good so we don't have to recalculate them again saves a little time Yeah, this should be done in a few seconds. Then we can calculate the palette for the young file. In this case, male and male and um, or adult and young use slightly different colors, so it makes sense to give them um, distinct color palettes. Um, in some cases, you would just um, use the same color palette for both, and then. When you um, generate the color palette, you would set the path here to a musk ox without the Y. A few more seconds. Last animation. Okay, good. Now we generate the color palette. Working. Worked. Great. And now we convert all sprites to index and then to ZT1 graphics. Yeah. Now it's running a CT Studio. We get this error. Mm. Man, I have to figure out what where this is coming from. But you know, it's not too bad. Okay, a few more seconds. We can already go to the ZTD C ZTD file and um, replace the. Um, the mail or delete both the mail and the young folder. We 
we'll get new ones instantly. So this is the cleaned mail folder, which is probably final. Still rendering now, oh, just finished. Um, so now we can remove all PNG files from the um, young folder. Delete them all. Yeah, you know, while this is loading, I can uh, create a text file. Just copy some paragraphs from uh, Wikipedia. So that's something there. Unconvert. I have to convert to. Uh, I can't use UTF-8, so I have to convert to NC. Okay. Okay, this is German. Why is it German? Replace all. And a mask ox. Mask oxen. Um, oh well. <sighs> Wait, this is Jim Moses Oxen Kaufen. Okay, mm, add up a musk ox. Musk oxen are mm, well adapted to their Arctic homes climate. Well, uh, the musk ox, oops. Yeah, that seems right. Now I'm just gonna make a yeah English language uh, text info file whatever. Footnotes in there. Yeah, one more. have overwritten the wrong language. Now save as Okay. 
Uh, so now the thing I've been waiting for here. Yeah, the young animations are finally done. I have been done for a few minutes now. <laughs> But now we can finally put them in game. Well, first, we check with Ape and see if everything looks alright. Yeah, of course, icons are still messed up. Okay, but we can look at our animations. That's pretty cool. Ooh, pixels coming alive. Now we can just uh, scroll through them to see what's happening. And I think it's pretty cool how you can turn pixels into something interesting. It feels completely different to the original uh, 3D model, you know. And really goes well with the um, Zutekun style. This um, this uh, shadow thing really blends it in perfectly. Oh no! I mean, yeah, uh, damn it! I forgot to edit the Young's palette. Arg! So I'm gonna have to re-render it. <sighs> At least the young doesn't take that long. The thing is, once you've palletized um, the images, you can't really go back because the palette is, um, is hard-coded into the file. I mean, you could uh, convert each up to um, full color again, but I don't know how to do that automatically. So I'll just re-render it. It's faster. Uh, meanwhile, anything else I can do? Oh yeah, I can set up folders for the icons. So we need uh, three types of icon. We need the actual icon when you when you buy something which will be in this case icon musk ox i'm just counting if it's two four six eight just eight long that works okay so we can call them all like that then we need this plaque uh, which um which you see when you when you open the um zoopedia ancestor whatever um, so we call this pull mosk ox pl and then you see uh, when you go to the animal list there are icons with uh, without a background so with transparent background and these are called ls mosk ox it doesn't display those for some reason Okay, now generate a color palette again, but this time I'll have to make sure I edit it manually. I've deleted the old color palette so it doesn't um, pick that one by chance. And it's the same. This pixel here should go. Oops. There. And this pixel here should go there. Angel layer. Merge down. Override. Okay. Now I can uh, finally convert all sprites again. And we'll soon get the arrow waiting for it and yeah, there it is mm. 
Meanwhile, um, we can try and locate something that we can use for our icon and uh, sprite uh, and, and plaque background. I think it'll be the Emperor Penguin because that's at least useful for the icon. Oh, you see, there's some color error here. Yeah, that'll do. Mm. Oh, they've changed the icon around. Marry me, your yeah. icon or whatever. Okay. I'll just do it like I used to do. All oh, the files are done. So delete all PNG files again. Yeah, I'm sorry that this is so repetitive, but I, I can't really be bothered to um, remake the whole thing again. Had to pick up, uh, had to break it up uh, two times already, and yeah. <laughs> Please bear with me. Yeah, so I'll go to the Zootacoon folder and look into um, animals too. I think that's where the icon is located. We're gonna take the Arctic Wolf. Polar Bear. If we can find it. Polar Bear. Penguin. Emperor Penguin. Yeah, those should be enough. Clear the search. Um, so we're going to the output folder here and just drag them in there. And we can open them uh, with uh, Z uh, ZT Studio, and we um, we don't get any quality loss if we open them with Ape. We get them slightly blurry and. Yeah, and just they don't look as nice. So we go to the um, peng. So we open the icon. Yeah, and this is it. Um, and now I'm gonna save this frame to my desktop. Open it in GIMP. And mm, I'm gonna have a look at the, the plaques now. Uh, those probably all use the same background. I'm just going to save this one and maybe we can put a composite together from from all these so we don't have um, as many cloning artifacts. Oops. Okay, for some reason I'm not getting the images cropped at the moment. I think that's a setting in CT Studio, but I can just crop it manually. Mm. Okay, so now to add on top of that, of course I need a um, frame from the muskox. Now I've already cleverly deleted them, so I have to re-render just one frame. Well.
this one. Ah, the camera is rotated. So I'll rotate it back. But if, if you do that, don't forget to, um, to change it back once you're done. Image and save as. Scale it. No. Nope. Lock. Yeah. Wait. First, I have to remove um, the. First, create a new layer, right? then remove the background color and now I can scale it down because otherwise I would get um, ugly and tie aliasing artifacts no oh. okay image no layer um auto crop layer now I can nicely scale it It's still acting up. <sighs> Come on. Image. Um, fit canvas to layers. Now I'm going to remove all the remains of this awful uh, green. Now I can scale again. Move it to a good spot. Now crop it again. Yeah, it looks nice. Maybe it's a bit too big, but uh, I think it works. We don't even have to clone out anything. I think we'll make it a tiny bit smaller. Oh, not a crop tool. But now finally that should be all right yeah that looks cool okay so we can export this image into um, its proper folder mask ox this is the icon and this is to be called n.png now if I go back crop it again and if I remove the background um, I export it to um, LS muskox again call it n.png and this is going to be our list icon now we have to do something else we have to um, set this to indexed here we can do it here it should be all right and just export again and also convert the other one to index because I forgot to do that earlier so this is basically the same that the script is doing but um, the difference here is that we can use one palette for um, you know one image and the other cases 
a bit more complicated because we have to share one palette of um, 250 um, colors among uh, dozens and hundreds of images or thousands even and that just takes a longer to calculate a good palette unless we don't do it in GIMP and in generally uh, generally we want to um, have it as much um, well, you know a largely automatic process here but the icons we have to edit them anyway so we can um, create the palette manually now the icons are good now it's time for the blacks so I'll open all these um, put them into one no. okay drag and drop is not working I'll crop it Boy, I can't move these layers again. I think that's really because I'm recording because I haven't had this in ages and I had it uh, when I last recorded the, those uh, thylacine videos. Well, I'm gonna do without. So I'll just clone away as much as I can. Or well, not clone away, you know, hide and unhide. simply by using those portions that are clean on each uh, layer respectively and this gives us a good deal less of those nasty cloning artifacts than we, uh, we would have gotten if we if we just cloned over it all. Okay, so now we merge them all down and clone away the rest. Yeah, use an aligned cursor. Yeah, that looks nice. Looks even nice enough to save it and store it for any possible future use, I think. Maybe someone could use it. So I'm going to save it to my... Um, I'm going to save it later to my Dropbox. So this is a black... Nice... Okay, uh, now we just need uh, some kind of muskox to put in there. Mm. Are we gonna do that? We we'll change these renders around. Okay, so we're gonna take this one. Oh, we're 
we're going to use the standing animation. Oops, I'm just going to make a few copies. So we have some clones, so standing in a herd or something. Okay, um, now what I have to do is um, get the dimensions of uh, this image. Um, so it's 197 pixels wide. 197 by 190... Um, no, the other way around, 179 and 194. Now we have the correct dimensions. We can set up our camera. Let me see. This is about one third of the horizon. That looks about right. Now when we render it out, it looks ugly because it's all pixelated. So we turn on anti-aliasing again. I set this to 1.5. Um, turn off compositing. Render again and it looks a lot nicer. Um, one more thing. I want to change um, are the shadows. I'm going to change these to spot. I'm going to change to buffer shadow. The shadows are soft. Hmm, they're still ugly. Oh well. And these. Where's the alpha? I suppose this is saving without alpha. Yes, render again, save again, open again. There it is. Okay, first we're gonna put it up there to see how it looks like. Yeah, it looks about right. Now we're gonna take these. Shadows, isolate them from the foreground so that we can edit them a little. Which is important because we have to fit them in. Okay, now we have them only in the foreground. You know, you could all do that with uh, render layers and things like that. Oh. Nope. New layer. But um I'm just gonna be doing it the hard way, you know. Layer to image size. I'll just make sure this is all black underneath here. So it looks convincing. Because next thing we're going to do is um, lighten up those shadows a bit. I think this is due to the buffer shadows and these extensive alphas. Those don't go well together. 
So we're gonna make them fairly light. Yeah. I think that would do. It looks pretty cool. I think that's it. So I'm gonna merge this down. You don't even have to blur those shadows, they so blurry enough. I'm gonna merge this down, I'm gonna um, index the image in the color palette, convert. I'm um, gonna export uh, to C temp output animals musk ox pull musk ox and this is again end of png okay now we have the icons now here we have to go back to this one again no oh, i still have it open um, because we have to introduce um, one pink pixel here just to be sure. Oh, it doesn't have to be pink, it just has, has to be a color that is not um, in the rest of the image. Because the first pixel it's always red from this corner and the first pixel that is encountered is usually um, uh, interpreted as the transparent color. So you saw you see here, this was like that in the original, this was, it was a pink pixel. When you put that into, into GIMP or um, and not into GIMP, into Ape or into ZT Studio, into Zootacoon 2, uh, Zootacoon 1, you get um, this color um, as the transparent color. Okay, now time to convert these into um, proper uh, icons ready for Zootacoon users. Uh, so first the icon, we load, we create a new CT1 graphic, load the frame and then save as a CT1 graphic. Mask ox, icon mask ox, and no part extension. New graphic, load, musk ox, list musk ox. This one already had a transparent background, so for some reason it likes that. I haven't really looked into the code um, in detail for that. But this could all kind of do with some kind of overhaul to make it consistent and all work together more well, more you know, more reliably. So save again. This time it's Alice Musk Oxen again and create a new graphic. Open Musk Ox. Pull Musk Ox. You see pink is the first again. Um save. Pull Musk Ox. And great. Now, time to get rid of these here. These were the old icons. I'm gonna add the new icons. Now, I'm gonna have to check here. Yeah, these are still old. paths to the icons. And I'll reload this one. It should be pretty damn close to finished. Mm, ape. Ah, 
Ah, that looks nice, huh? Pretty cool. Oh, I haven't updated those young animations, probably. I hope. I want to go back and do them all over again. time yeah cool great so I think that's all working mm. now we can take a risk and put it in game uh -huh. Uh -huh. okay so we go to zoo, zoo tycoon the updates folder and just drag it in there well yeah got to close it first Of course, I haven't adjusted any of the um, of the values of the configuration, but I think you'll can you'll be able to do that easily enough yourself in in Ape. You know, that's not what you need video tutorials for. <laughs> Okay, this seems to be working. I think this is it. So it took me about like quite a while to figure that out and put it all together. But now it's really something you can put together in a, in a couple of hours. And then you have a, a completely new animal and it works great and it goes well with the rest and it it's nicely animated and it's you know consistent i think it's just pretty pretty cool what you can what you can do with all these uh funny 3d models and how you can put them into sprites and create something entirely new from them all right that's it for this time hope you um, understood everything and <laughs> don't get as much errors as i got you know <laughs>